Hi and welcome to the Comfy Red Couch. My name is Tracy and I'm your host. And I am coming to you from a very grey day in Toronto, which means that's a good day to podcast. Yesterday it was beautiful and sunny and I sat outside on the porch and did some knitting on a project that I'm really excited to share with you. And it was just a lovely day to relax and knitting on the porch is always a fantastic idea. Friday we had this crazy, crazy windstorm that came out of nowhere at about 4 o'clock and I live in a very old part of Toronto so those trees were just swaying. It was very, very scary. At one point my neighbor knocked on my front door and we had to lock the door because the door kept blowing open and um, her umbrella had flown into my backyard. Mary Poppins was not attached and I had to go out there and get the the umbrella, it's one of those big ones that goes into a table. It was broken, unfortunately, so she had to go out and buy a new umbrella yesterday. We had a tree fall down just a little bit down the street from us and landed on a wire. So most of our street was closed with caution tape because there was a wire, a live wire, hanging in the middle of our street all of yesterday, which meant it was a nice, quiet day on the porch because cars weren't zooming by and that was just a nice way to spend a Saturday during the afternoon. Isaac's show, because of the wind, was cancelled on Friday night. They had a power failure at the school, so his show was rescheduled to yesterday for a matinee. I was very glad I did not buy the Friday night tickets. I went to see it last night instead, and I'll talk about that on Bits and Bobs. I do have lots of lovely things to share with you this week, but first let me tell you where you can find me. I am Tracy RR on Ravelry, and I am Comfy Red Couch on Instagram. And there is a Ravelry group called The Comfy Red Couch. There hasn't been much action there recently, but today I am going to be announcing a craft along. So hopefully we'll get a little bit more chatter happening there. Speaking of chatter, I am ready to start chattering away about the lovely things that I've gotten up to this week. But first, I do want to welcome anyone who's new to the podcast. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, but I do share some other crafts as well. Welcome, I hope that you have a lovely beverage to sit down and enjoy and that you've got your craft of choice to work on while you join me on the Comfy Red Couch. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. You know I always love having you here and I know you know the drill. You have your beverage of choice, you have your craft of choice and you are all snuggled up on the comfy red couch looking for Scout who was up here then left. She'll probably come back at some point during the podcast but you're ready to start chattering away about all the lovely things that we've all gotten up to this week. Let's start off with some tea time and today I am drinking out of my lovely little kitty mug and this is from Anthropology. And today I am drinking something super, super special. It is from, now this is going to be an interesting one, because the package I have is Bluebird Tea, but it is no longer Bluebird Tea. It is Bird and Blend. Earl's Paradise, which I am drinking today, is a classic Earl Grey with a papaya and strawberry twist. So it has Ceylon Black Tea, papaya pieces, strawberry pieces, lime leaves, jasmine blossoms, and then some natural flavoring. So I am drinking this. It is, I had some earlier this week. It is lovely, so I'm having a lovely second cup of tea. This week I had a lovely package sent to me with lots of beautiful teas in it, all from Bird and Blend, which was Bluebird Tea Company. So I do have Earl's Paradise, and I thought I would share some of the ones that I've been drinking over the week. And I was spoiled with this package. It was completely unexpected. I am loving these. So I do have Coconut Milk Oolong. And this one was an interesting one. You really, it had to steep for a while before you could really taste the, the little coconutty flavors, but it was a nice creamy tea. I tried Cherry Bakewell, which was a nice fruity tea. Now I'm probably going to butcher this. I don't know if it's treacle or treckle sponge. So this was one of the special flavors that 
they had on their vote in order to bring back um, a tea, but they ended up bringing back two classic teas that people loved. And I also have bonfire toffee. I took this to work with me the other day and I was in a meeting. I let it steep way too long. It was an acquired taste after letting it steep way too long, but it was really, really good. And then the one that I have been absolutely loving all week is chocolate digestives. This one smells absolutely amazing and also tastes spectacular. I had had this on Friday morning and I opened my David's tea lid and my whole office just smelled amazing. And I had someone come in and just, what is that smell? It's, it's my tea. And it is really, really lovely. I've had two cups, I'm getting low. I may need to order from Bird and Blend because this is now one of my favorite teas. So highly, highly recommended. But today I am drinking Earl's Paradise, which is also very, very lovely. It is nice and warm. And I think it's time to start a podcast. So cheers to you for a happy, healthy and crafty week. And let's start talking about knitting. If you are a returning viewer, you're going to wonder why I don't have a Material Girl segment this week. I did say I wanted to get my green polka dot dress done for an event that's coming up this Friday. I've been procrastinating. So I'm hoping to maybe get into the sewing room on Tuesday or Wednesday, finish off the front trim, get the buttons on, get it hemmed, and then be able to wear it to the event on Friday. I'm hoping the weather also cooperates. And then I could share it next week. So crossing my fingers that I don't keep procrastinating. I do love to sew, but this week has been all about the knitting. And the first thing I am going to share with you is living in my beautiful little bobbins bag. And this is a bag that Danny and her mother Liz worked on. And this cross stitch with the buttons. I just love it. Inside is a half finished object that I shared with you last week and these are my Twas the Night Before Christmas socks and I wasn't sure whether I was going to cast on this second sock first or a striped sock that I had been also contemplating last week. I cast this one on first. However, I do have a little bit of a twist that happened. I cast this on and I was working on the ribbing at work and then when I went to start the pattern section I realized I had not brought any stitch markers with me and because it is a left and a right foot I needed to mark a spot. I knew that if I worked on this at work without a stitch marker I'd make a huge huge mess of things so I popped it into my bag luckily I also had my other yarn with me and I cast on my second sock of my striped socks. So this project did not get very far. However, it was the first one I did get cast on. I am looking forward to spending a little bit more time with it in the next few days. But this is the sock that got most of the love this week. And this was the sock that I had finished and shared last week, my half finished object. And as I said, I was debating, do I put my Christmas Eve cast on on or do I put on the stripy socks for Isaac? And when I forgot my marker, I cast on the stripy socks for Isaac. I am going to do the same thing where I'll put an afterthought heel in. I have matched them up. I'm right actually right just past where the first heel popped in. So a little more than halfway, I guess, on the striping portion. Not much more to go. And I am using Knit Picks Felici, and of course the ball band has fallen off. And this is the Candy Shop colorway. I'm hoping maybe on Tuesday to just knit, 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 because I'm at an event during the daytime. And hopefully next week I will have a pair of socks to share with you. 
at least one pair of socks. We'll see if I get to my Christmas Eve cast on. They need love too. Oh, so that is something that kept me busy. I did keep this as my purse all week, so my wallet's still in here, my keys are still in here. It's just easier to carry around one thing rather than two. Now, this is going to be a complete shocker to, it's a shocker to me, so it may be a shocker to you as well. I have a project that I have been working on in my gorgeous bag from Christine. Christine was the, I guess, first drawn winner of our Spirit of Autumn Knit Along, and we did a little bit of a swap or two, and this is one of the bags that she sent me as a swap for some tea and some other lovely things. So I am loving this bag, and inside this bag is my Knit Me Baby One More Time sweater. And last week I picked it up, there was this little tiny bit, and when I picked the pattern up, I couldn't figure out where in the pattern I was, so I ripped it all back. And then it took me three more times to cast on, but now I am past my split for sleeves, and I am just knitting away. I am using Nora George yarns, and this is, I've put all the other yarns in this bag here. So I have used as my color A, my main color, the raspberry colorway from Nora George yarns, and this is a BFL, BFL cashmere silk blend, just lovely to work with. A little bit rustic compared to my merino blends that I usually use but I am loving this color. And right now I am using Black Current as my color B. I am changing the pattern slightly. The striping is supposed to be two stripes of a contrasting color one and a contrasting color two. So this is main color and then I would be using two different colors for the contrasting stripes but I really wanted to use as much of the raspberry as I could, and I also want to use as much of this black currant as I can as well. So I've been sort of changing it up a little bit with the striping, and what I did do was I introduced two rows of the black currant, then did six rows of raspberry, four rows black currant, four rows raspberry, six rows black currant, two rows raspberry, and now I am into the black currant. And near the bottom, I'm going to introduce a third color, and I'm still trying to decide which one, and I am leaning toward one of these, April Showers, or Pollen. That's the one I'm leaning towards, yes, yellow. So, I'm thinking that the yellow just has that nice bit of brightness to it. The blue will tone it down a bit, but I just, I don't know, I'm thinking to do the same thing where I stripe in the same way with the yellow and the purple, and then I will do the cuff in the yellow. On the sleeves, they're short sleeves, I'm thinking of doing the same pattern here with the pink and the blue, and then doing just a yellow cuff. And I'm also thinking of doing the neck as yellow as well so yellow is not my favorite color but I think it is going to be a little bit of a feature in this sweater so that's what I'm thinking and I better be careful or I will lose my stitches off my needles and that is never a good thing but yes I am working on a sweater for me which never happens it's a shocker, I know. I do have a few little mistakes in here. Um, I got a little bit distracted and I've tried to even it out a bit. I'm hoping this will come out with blocking. I had an extra stitch in there, so I pulled it out and I've got a little ladder there on that side. I really wasn't paying attention. So I've got a few little, few little blips, but because this is a sweater for me and it's not a test knit, 
I can live with it. Just the fact that I'm actually getting this done is a huge feat because it has been years since I knit a sweater for myself. I did knit a sweater for Isaac when I did the test knit for uh, Mina Phillip, Knitting Expat. I did her mix and match sweater and it's a beautiful green that I made a sweater for Nathaniel. I used the swatch to put a pocket. I'm not going to be putting pockets on this one, but I am really looking forward to getting through this knit a little bit more. I've got to stop zipping my yarn in my project bag. That's not a good idea. But slowly, surely, I'm getting there. I'm hoping to show you more progress next week. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I actually finish this for next week? Not holding my breath. I've got a dress to finish. But I am super proud of myself for actually spending the time with a sweater. I want to knit all the sweaters. I like this pattern so much. I want to knit about 10 of them in all different colorways. I like the fact that I can use one skein wonders and do some different things with it. I'm now looking at some of my yarn going, oh, that would look nice if I sort of faded it and knit another Knit Me Baby one more time. It's just such a cute sweater. Let's see how it looks on me, and then maybe we'll make that decision. Anyway, that is my favorite things for this week, and I have a sweater in progress. That never happens. Earlier this week, I was contacted by the lovely Christine, who was one of the winners of our Spirit of Autumn Knit Along, and the maker of this beautiful bag right here and she asked me if I might consider hosting a royal wedding knit along. She and her daughter Sam had been discussing the idea and thought that would be a, a really fun thing for us to do on the comfy red couch so she put the idea out there and I thought it was a fantastic idea but I decided I wanted to open it up just a little bit more so it's not going to be just a royal wedding knit along it is going to be a royalty and romance craft along. So we just had a royal baby born not too long ago. And of course, on May 19th, we've got the royal wedding about to happen. So lots of hype and excitement over that. And I think there are so many more crafts that we could do some royalty and romance things with. So not just knitting, but crocheting, quilting. You could even fit rug hooking in there, I'm sure. Whatever craft you love to do, if you can put a royalty or a romance theme to it, well, please join us in the royalty and romance craft along. And a perfect idea for pattern might be Danny of Little Bobbins, her vintage love story socks. One of those patterns would be perfect. If you are creating a shawl for a bride, or perhaps you are going to a wedding, that would be a fantastic entry for the craft along. If you're maybe making a beautiful quilt for a newborn, that too would fit in. So royalty and romance, whatever you can link it, perhaps you want to use red, white, and blue yarns for the, the British and the American union that's about to happen, that might work. Although we often, uh, Think that the red and white too because Meghan Markle lived in Toronto for quite a few years as she filmed suits so that red white and blue and you can use one of the lovely special yarns that's that are coming out over the next few weeks to celebrate the royal wedding I know Elm Tree Yarns has a lovely yarn and I know that Nora George has created a royalty box with gorgeous yarn which might be heading my way so there are so many ways that you can link it to royalty and romance and you just need to create something and let's share these lovely creations on the Comfy Red Couch group in Ravelry. I'll create a thread for chatter and I'll create a thread for finished objects as well. Now for a prize, Christine and her lovely daughter Sam have offered to make something for the prize. So Christine is going to make one of her lovely bags. And this is one that she made for me, which I shared in the last segment. This is my second bag that Christine has made for me. The first bag she made for me is this gorgeous 
London bag that we did in an earlier swap just after she won the Spirit of Autumn Knit Along. I love this bag. And I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the craft along, but if it's a small project, I think it's going to go in here because I think that's just the perfect bag to put it in. So I really hope that you join us for the royalty and romance craft along. I did put a little spoiler on Instagram a few days ago. I am so thankful to Christine and Sam for putting the idea forward for hosting the craft along. And I am especially thankful that they have so generously offered to create a prize package for the winner of this craft along. I'm excited to see all of the wonderful things that you're going to be making, whether it is a shawl for somebody who's getting married, whether it is for a brand new baby that's been born. And I know Jessica of Jessica Ruth Knits podcast just had her baby this past Friday on Friday, May the 4th, Star Wars Day. She had a baby boy. Huge congratulations to her because I know that she has been wanting to be a mom for so long. So just in time for Mother's Day. Anyway, I know that you will come up with some lovely things to make and just link it somehow to royalty, new babies, weddings, romance, and you are definitely welcome to join in the royalty and romance craft along. I almost forgot to mention the dates. So the craft along will run from today, which is May 6th until Sunday, June 17th, which happens to be my anniversary. How romantic. So I am hoping that you will be able to join along in the fun. And as I said, if you are knitting, crocheting, maybe you are cross stitching. When I put my Instagram post up the other day, I used one of the lovely cross stitches that I made as a wedding gift for my sister-in-law and I loved it so much I then had to make one for myself as well with 1 Corinthians 13 on it. There are so many things that you can do in order to participate and I cannot wait to see what you've got to share. So for now, figure out what you're going to be making. I have a bag ready. I just need to figure out what I'm going to be making. While I did get something lovely in the mail this week, I thought I would first share a Tracy's treasure with you. And what I'm going to share with you has come from Loop London. And I purchased it a couple of years ago when we went for the summer. And it's a little bit of a different item for me. And it is living in this Loop brown paper bag. It is not a sandwich that's been in there too long. It is gorgeous hand dyed ribbon. And as I said, I did purchase this a couple of years ago when we went for the summer. Crinkle, crinkle. And what I bought were these lovely hand-dyed silk ribbons. So I got this one in latte. This is periwinkle. I also got Twilight. This one is Orchid. Surprisingly, I also bought this one, which is called Sunnyside. Yes, it's yellow. I also got Rosebud. And I think this one is probably my favorite one. This is Granny Smith. So I bought these lovely ribbons and I purchased them because I thought they would be really quite beautiful along the inside of a cardigan whenever I get to knitting a cardigan along the back neckline and also up and down the button band. I thought that would be really quite pretty, but now that I've gotten back to sewing, it also might be nice as something in my sewing projects as well. So these are some beautiful ribbons that I purchased a couple of years ago. And I just, the colors were so soft and beautiful. I just couldn't help myself. They would be lovely on a shawl as well. I'm not sure how I'm going to use them, but I do have them. They are there and I thought they need to come out 
and see the light of day and share the beauty of these beautiful treasures that I do have. Are you going to come on up? Come on up. Scout has come to join us because she knows there are gorgeous ribbons involved. So that is what I'm going to share on Tracy's treasures and not yarn, not fabric, something a little bit different. Unlike last week, the mailman did pay attention to me this week and brought me a lovely package from Tracy of Nora George Yarns. And there are some regular shop colorways in my package and there are some special spoilers. So definitely a wonderful package to receive. And first I will share some of the regular colorways with you. And the first one I'm going to share is April Showers. And this is April Showers on Tracy's MCN base, so Merino Cashmere Nylon. And I thought this one was really quite interesting. It's very, very moody. It is the same color or colorway as this, which is one of the yarns that I'm debating using for my Knit Me Baby One More Time sweater. This is BFL Cashmere Silk Base, and this is the Merino Cashmere Nylon. And just a very, very different dye lot. This one's very, very moody. And this one's a lot more of a lighter storm cloud than this one. So definitely interesting. And I bought this because I thought it would look lovely with Camellia, also on the MCN base. I just thought the two of these together would make a fun, fun project. Look at that pop and it. It's popping a lot more on the camera than it is in real life, but just gorgeous, gorgeous colorways and super, super soft yarn. You, if you've tuned in before, you know I love Tracy's yarns. It's hard not to. So those are a couple of the regular colorways that Tracy carries, and I believe there are still some in the shop now. I had a very, very hard time resisting this one, and I really tried. I really, really tried. If you've tuned in before, you know exactly why I had a hard time resisting this. Two words. Pink, green. And these pink and green supermarket flowers, they captured my heart. And it may be true that I already have supermarket flowers, but it is a very different batch. Kind of like these ones. My other one has, has more brighter oranges and yellows, and this one was pink and green. So I just, I could not say no. So that is the other thing that I purchased from the regular shop and I do believe there is still more supermarket flowers in the shop still. So how? I do not know. I don't even know how I resisted as long as I did. The next few things that I am going to share with you require me to go into spoiler alert mode. So. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, if you do not want to see the Nora George Mrs. Weasley's Club or her great characters of literature, Skein or Minis, run screaming out of the room, cover your ears, cover your eyes, do what you've got to do because I'm going to be sharing some gorgeous Nora George Yarns clubs. So run away if you need to. First off, I will share the great characters of literature skein, and it is based on Peter Rabbit. So this is Peter Rabbit. And I think really, it really is Peter Rabbit. Look at those blues and little bits of pink, and there's some beige yellow in there. The mini is just a perfect light, light brown. There's little shots of green. This to me screams Peter Rabbit, so I think Tracy has definitely nailed him and in yarn. Yes, she has. So that is the Peter Rabbit skein and mini. And then she has done a mini club. And this one here is the Tailor of Gloucestershire. This one is Squirrel Nutkin. 
Benjamin Bunny is in the middle. Jeremy Fisher is second from the end. And then we have Jemima, Jemima Puddle Duck. So those are the five minis that were in the Great Characters of Literature Peter Rabbit set for April. And even though Easter was at the very, very beginning of April, Peter Rabbit, I think, goes all spring long. The final thing I'm going to share with you today is the spoiler for the Mrs. Weasley's Knit Club. And it is wonderful. This is a magical Weasley garden. And you know what? It really is. And I'm not even sharing the mini with you that it goes with. So look at those gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And the mini is this amazing orange. But look at these colors in this yarn. This purples, this gorgeous bluey green, even the yellows are amazing. I have dreams of what I want to make with this skein because it is beyond glorious and I see it as a perfect neckline because I'm thinking of another Knit Me Baby One More Time sweater which fades. Can't you just see that at the neck and then below? Even if I used this mini as the trim around the neck, it would be just such an amazing sweater. So now I'm dreaming of all the sweaters in all the yarn. And you know what? That leaves me with an empty basket and lots of knitting dreams and a dog behind me who's kicking me in the back. Thanks, Skip. It's now time for some bits and bobs, and this is my segment where I talk about anything and everything. And this week, as always, was a crazy week. Wednesday, I came home, it was a beautiful day out, and I was talking with one of my neighbors, and I look up, and we had had squirrels a few weeks ago, and we had the squirrel people come. They put one-way traps on. They were supposed to come this week and remove the one-way traps and cover them over. One-way traps are still there. I look up, and one squirrel has popped in sort of underneath where one of the one-way traps is. They're still in my house. And then I look at the other spot because a few moments later a different squirrel comes and has found another way to get in near the other one-way trap. So I still have squirrels in my house and I am trying to contact the squirrel people to get them to fix the situation because of course we can't replace our roof until the squirrels are out. It's nesting season. This is crazy squirrel time. So I'm not loving squirrels right now. Um, as Greg described them yesterday, they are just furry rats. They just look a little bit different. Perhaps they're a little cuter than a rat, but they are destructive little creatures that are getting into a space which I don't want them in. So not loving the squirrels right now. <sighs> Moving on. On Friday, I did say Isaac had his show and it was canceled because of the windstorm. So he had a show on Wednesday night. He had a show Thursday night. There was a show Thursday afternoon for the matinee. The Friday show got cancelled, so anyone who had tickets for the Friday show, thankfully that wasn't me, had to go to the Saturday matinee that they put on, and then we went to the show last night, and Isaac had a few speaking parts, and he was an army officer and got to tell everybody to hop two, three, four, so he was nice and loud, and um, it was a well-done musical, as his school often does. One thing that I was super excited about this week was that Tuesday was May 1st. I was happy to greet May and I greeted it with some beautiful new shoes that I wore to work. And I've been getting out a little bit during my lunch hour, just trying to enjoy the green that is starting to pop up in different places. The daffodils are in full bloom right now. The tulips are starting as well. I'm starting to see some cherry blossoms just about to come out 
in the near future. Oh, I love spring. Anyway, I think that's all I've got to share on Bits and Bobs this week. I am looking forward to some lovely days ahead and some outdoor knitting, and I hope that that's what you're enjoying too. Thank you so much for joining me on the Comfy Red Couch this week. I hope that you've had a chance to just relax and refresh, take care of yourself, give that project that you've been spending some time with some much needed love, and I wish you a wonderful week ahead, full of lots of blossoms and lovely things. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, lots of lovely autumnal things happening as well. But for me, I'm enjoying spring. Anyway, I hope to see you next week and I wish you a wonderful week ahead. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Next week is Mother's Day, and I can tell you, while flowers are nice, bouquets of yarn, so much better. Beautiful, springy.